Now I'm going to tell you about property alpha. And it turns out that property alpha tells us whether a choice function in a finite set is rationalizable. It's an if and only if. If x is a finite set of choices, just like the x we saw here, if x is a finite set of choices, well then, if the choice function over this set of, over all the combinations of these choices, if it satisfies this thing I'm going to tell you about, property alpha, well then, that choice function is rationalizable. And if it doesn't satisfy property alpha, that choice function is not rationalizable. Therefore, if it's rationalizable, it must satisfy property alpha and vice versa. Finite sets here. We're not talking about the infinite choices in a continuous space. All right, what is this famous property alpha? Given a set X, a choice function C for X. We got this choice function C over some set X, any number of elements over the or sets of those elements. We can talk about which sets might be in this in this choice set. Well, this choice function that tells me whenever I'm presented with any of these possible individual or combined choices, the choice function tells me, the choice function tells me which I will, we can think about it as which one I will choose. And that choice function satisfies property alpha if for any sets, for all sets, that's upside down A is for all, for all sets, A, finite set, and B, where B is within A, is strictly within A. I told you this comes out of, this, this choice stuff comes out of set theory. What does it mean B is strictly within A? Well, If the yellow is A, B has to be part of A. No part of B is outside of A. And the fact that it's strictly within A means that some part of A is not in B. B is an internal organ of A. So if B is in A, and A is in the big choice set X. So we're talking about the, the, a general finite set X. So here we have the big set X consists of element A, B, and C. Okay, well suppose I, I could define this guy Suppose I defined, suppose I defined, suppose I defined this as A and this as B. Here we have B has, A has all of the elements that B has, but B has some elements that A has not. And A is strictly within X. Sorry, A is weakly within X. X is a weak sub A is a weak subset of X. Because every element of X is in A, but in fact they in this they are the same set. This is a stronger condition than this condition. Alright, so we know what we're talking about. What property alpha says Property alpha means property alpha is that whenever 
we have a situation like this. So property alpha, the choice, property alpha is a property of the choices, of, the cho of a particular combination of choices, just like this one. Property alpha says that this choices must obey the following rule. Whenever one set is within another set, if the choice And the choice made in the smaller set, in this example A, if the choice made in the smaller set is also available in the larger set, I said that backwards, if the choice made in the larger set is also available in the smaller set, then it must be that it's also chosen in the smaller set. So in other words, if I take away an option that wasn't chosen in this larger set, my choice should not change. If I go from set, uh, if I go from set ABC and I'm choosing A, when I take away option C, I better still choose A. Similarly, if I chose A in the smaller set, if I add an option, I either need to choose that new option or I need to keep my choice the same. It's independent of irrelevant alternatives, independent of alternatives that are not chosen. And that is property alpha. And we can see some proofs that if x is a finite set, as I said, then any choice function satisfying property alpha, such as this one, is rationalizable. And any function not setting, satisfying property alpha is not rationalizable. Therefore, it's a necessary and a sufficient condition.